Perfect. So Jeff, I'll let you take it away. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. And um, yeah, uh, all yours. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen instead of looking at me. Um, so that's not as important. Um, so <clears throat> I have a lot of process that I, I like to show. And <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, the other month I did a setup and where did my the meeting go? Uh, nope, there it is. Okay. So <clears throat> I did a, a meeting for RIT and I think maybe James, you might've come to that. And then, <clears throat> you know, we're like, oh, hey, this would be good for, you know, an entry level setup and younger students to get the ball moving and to get ahead of the game a little bit. So um, just so you guys know where I'm coming from, you know, um, you know, I am an industrial designer as well. I am uh, RIT alumni as well. I graduated in 93. So that makes me 50, right? So I learned prior to digital transformation. So my training in industrial design is all um, drawing on paper, sketching on paper, markers, pastel, um, drafting on paper, model making by hand, doing photo shoots with slides and terribleness, right? So I barely touched anything digital during my career. All my digital work was done on the job. So I worked for about 20 some years um, in industrial design. I've been with Autodesk for about six years. Um, I've taught uh, industrial design as adjunct um, at the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale for about eight years. Um, I am now teaching a class for Alex's grad level um, for Fusion at RIT. Um, <clears throat> that's my first class teaching there. And uh, my CAD background is SolidWorks. Um, I used it for about 17 years before I joined uh, Autodesk. I also used one of our um, sketching programs called Sketchbook way before I was a Autodesk employee and I developed or maybe found my way. I wouldn't say I developed, maybe I found a way to work between the two for CAD and for drawing um, and realizing how they help each other. So uh, many other people have done similar things, just my way of finding, you know, finding a path through the forest. Right, so let me move this really quickly. All right, I'll put that here. Uh, Jeff, there isn't any screen sharing going on. Yep, I'm just starting. Perfect, sorry. Just moving things to the right place because I have three screens in front of me and I'm trying to make sure I'm in the right place before I start. Um, so if you want to learn about me, this is me on um, uh, Instagram, you know, advertising for RIT, right? We gotta, we gotta help. Um, so my world and my background is drawing with markers, right? And I reluctantly started Instagram, you know, years ago, but I should have started before that. I didn't want another, you know, social media thing to deal with, but it turned out to be really good. So, you know, I post what I do and I, you know, I got to remember, you know, I don't work for design anymore. I work for a large corporation that sells tools to designers. Now I help people design. So this is my way to keep my world and my mind moving. So I design things for me and it's quite nice to just do things for me as opposed to doing things for other people. <laughs> that might sound bad, but I've done so many years of things for other people that it's nice just to do things for me and I don't care about anybody else. <laughs> Call it a little selfish, but you know, that's what I do. But it keeps me motivated and it keeps me, you know, doing these things, right? So, um, you know, that's what I work on, what I do. And, you know, I, I advertise, for RIT whenever I can. If you haven't, um, follow me on Instagram when I travel, right? I always wear an RIT shirt. 
and I travel almost every week. So I'm in, I'm in airports, I'm on planes and I'm advertising, right? And I usually post it on social media. And so many people have asked me about this shirt. Oh, you like the Bengals? I'm like, this is not a Bengal, right? This is not a Bengal. And it says RAT on it. And I'm like, okay, you people don't read. Anyway, but I, I'm passionate about helping RIT because it is a school poised to go to the next level. And I know this, A, because I'm an alumni, uh, B, because I have seen so many other schools when I was on the education team at Autodesk. So I'm trying to find a specific thing. And I've toured a lot of schools and I've worked with a lot of schools and RIT is poised to go to that next level. So you can see a lot of common threads here. So I do a lot of drawing with markers, right? And I do a lot of drawing on toned paper, right? And a lot of times, you know, I draw something and it's usually a one-off, right? And sometimes I do more with it. So I'm trying to get down here to this one, right? And this is a, a thumbnail sketch on toned paper. So there's no tracing. There's no drawing over anything. You have one shot to get it right. I draw in pen because um, I have been a designer for so long that that's just my normal methodology. And then a little bit of marker and a little bit of lighter lights and darker darks, right? Sometimes when I sketch something out like this and I do it, I'll take it to the next level and I'll try and, and go to a CAD model. And if I look at this floating Camaro, and if you look through my, my work, whenever you see a floating car, it's because I was lazy, right? Whenever you see it, it's because I couldn't think of drawing something else. I'm like, I'm like, ah, I'll just draw a car and make it look like a speeder ship, right? It's, it's, it's taking an easy path, right? So I drew this and then, you know, I went down the path, right? Let me just go up a little bit more. And then, you know, I use sketchbook and I just, quickly laid out some elevation drawings. And these elevation drawings are translating the general design intent that is these sketches here to give yourself what the top view might look like, what the side view might look like, and then what a front view might look like. Notice I skipped the back, right? Probably might have been smart to do a back view or a bottom view as well, but this is rough in. And this is a very normal process. Do a drawing. Do some control drawings to give yourself an idea what it, it's going to look like. And I took these and then I went and I, I did a CAD file, right? And this is the CAD file, right? So I'm going A, B, C, right? Very normal process from drawing to elevation to testing a CAD file. And the reason I did this one was... Um, to learn more about one of the aspects of fusion, which is this purple button here, which is subdivisional modeling, which is if you're coming from any kind of normal CAD program like SOLIDWORKS or Inventor or, or ProE or whatever, it's a new way to work. So I needed to learn that. So I'm gonna roll my timeline back here. All right, and let me turn on my canvases. I'm gonna turn on some sketches. So you can see here, I simply placed my drawings in the CAD file. And I've got a side view, and I got a top view, and I got a front view. And that gave me a baseline to help visualize and see the 3D. That's a really simple way to get a start from going to from drawing to CAD. And then I did this in here, and you can see that it's terrible. It looks like a melted bar of clay, right? And the reason that it looks this way is I don't know what I'm doing at this point in time in this environment and how to do these modeling things. It's just complete failure, like, well, this is terrible, right? But the point is you learn from that and you go down and you do more. And this one is much better and much closer to the sketch. And if you come in here, you can see that 
it doesn't look like a melted bar of clay. It actually has some purpose, right? There are some things that, you know, are not right, like over here and down here and down here and over here, and especially right here that I know now, but I didn't know then. There are two takeaways here. So how clean this top hood is and all my lines are organized and nice. That's the takeaway. But also this over here, I did a test to model the front end and I was like, oh, I'll try it here. But what I learned is that I can do a lot of things using my surfacing background. So we can get in, I mean, we can get into all kinds of fusion later, but it's not as important right now. But the point is I learned about this and I helped build it and I helped go through my process. Come on, go to the end, all right? Go to the end. We'll just do it the old fashioned way. And that's it. Oh, so informed, that's why. Let's go. You know, it's going to build out that structure and everything I did and go to my present time, right? So there's cool things going on here, right? Like, like I can move and articulate um, these items and they articulate together, right? And there's fun details and things that I learned as I was working on this. But this was my first experimentation in this world, right? Okay. Let me switch to this and let me stop my share for a second. Come on, where are you? There it is. Stop share. And I'm going to share screen three. Okay. And I'll share this here. So um, this is, let me just come to, there we go. Okay. Let me switch sides here and we'll go over here and make our life a little bit easier for me to work. Okay, so this is a digital drawing, right? And it, it is done in sketchbook, right? So it's a digital drawing tool, right? So here's this sketch, this is sketchbook. It is a free app that you can run on your computer with any kind of drawing utensil you like. I've got a Wacom Antique here that I'm driving off my computer. I also have a Wacom and Tuos, and then I've got, you know, portable drawing computers. This also can go on your phone. This also can go on your iPad. This also can go on your Android device. Doesn't matter. You can use your finger if you like to color with it. You can import drawings and so on. But the reason I show this one now is to contrast what we just did. Because what we just did was talk about a very traditional process. I'm gonna go from a drawing. I'm gonna control the drawings more. And then I'm gonna do a CAD file, right? So very traditional. And there's nothing wrong with that process. But you can also go the other way. And this is where I talk about ways to get better at drawing. So I've got this nice little concept here. It's a Battlestar Galactic, that, you know, spaceship thing, right? And it's a super dramatic um, perspective. Now, I have a lot of experience with technical drawing and I could lay this out and do it. But if you don't, and or time is of the essence, there is no reason why you shouldn't be using CAD to help you, right? So I look at CAD and drawing as a symbiotic relationship. If you can use drawing to make CAD better, great. If you can use CAD to make drawing better, great. And the two start to blend and they start to help each other, right? So don't be afraid. So this is a sketch here, right? Okay. But what you got to remember is I just did a quick fusion file and I blocked this together and it took care of all my perspective, all my horizon line, all my shadow. And because it's a CAD file, well, maybe this view is better. Well, maybe that view is better. Oh, wait, I really like this one as well, right? The point is I can experiment with composition and 
move it around and with a CAD file that takes no time. This is a simple prismatic build, just, and then mirror it. It's simple and easy, right? But when you get here, right? And let me turn this one on really quick and I'll turn this one off, right? And I'll turn this layer off and I'll start here, right? And you can see that what I do first is I find my perspective. So I know that all my lines going to the right here are going to the right vanishing point. My lines here are going to the left vanishing point. And I've given myself a quick cross section of what it might look like. And that's a really, really nice way to get your mind and your hand thinking about where things go, right? And once you do that, it's very easy to then come in here and sketch in some light changes. And you can clearly see, right? Like I added on the back here and the back. I changed all these details. I changed down here. I changed up here, right? I changed the way the nose looked and this, all this intake stuff and all this stuff over here, which is vastly different than the CAD file. But the CAD file gave me a huge advantage to move forward right? And get the ball moving. And if I zoom out here and I come down and I say, you know what, let's turn this one down, right? We'll make sure the other ones are off first. There we go. And as I turn this one down, you can see that how much I use the CAD file <clears throat> to get me <clears throat> all the details I needed. And with a simple little bit of color, right? And I'll turn off my guidelines. Now I have this nice, clean, energetic sketch, right? That just says, maybe this is what it's going to look like. And it's got position and it's got um, composition. And you're like, okay, cool. But I use CAD to aid that process, right? And that's what it's all about. And there's no reason why you can't do that, okay? So if I quickly flip sides for a second. Again, I'm going to stop that share and I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go over here. All right. Here's the fusion file. Okay. So that's it. Anybody with a week of time in fusion can build this. Okay. Cause I'm going to hit the play button here. That's all it takes. That's it. That's not much at all. And I'll play it again from over here so you can see a little bit better. A couple rectangles, a quick sketch, and then mirror everything. And you're done. That's not a lot of effort to get a quick thing. And then I can play with it. I can move it. I can see what I want it to look like. I could duplicate it and have more than one, all right? And then when I render it, you can see I put it in a scene here and that's literally the scene it is. And I've got all these renderings here, right? Which one do I like? Could I have picked this one here? That's way too dramatic for what I wanted, but it looks cool, right? These are two seconds of my time. All right? Do I do a quick view of this thing? What am I doing with it, right? I mean, all kinds of fun stuff. That one's not bad either. That one's turned into like a cork board, but the whole point being is use the tools, all right? And find the middle ground between them, all right? Let me stop that share. Let me share again, and I'll share screen three. And while I'm doing that, any questions on what I'm talking about here so far. Okay, I'll take that as a no. All right. I'm going to go TIFF file. All right. And we are going to go here. There we go. It's got to open it. And we're going to go to another level. All right. So 
Let me hide that and let me zoom this out a little bit. So that previous sketch was um, very quick and very raw, right? So that's cool, quick concept, good thing um, to do. This one here is much more polished. It's much more of a rendering. Um, and I'm using sort of a combination of CAD underlay and symmetry to do a cool concept of what this might look like. So I'm gonna back off the system and then rebuild it for you guys so you can see it a little more step by step, okay? So I'm gonna take off all this information, right? And as we go down here, whoops, all right? Okay. Let's see what happens and how this works. Let's be down here more. There we go. This, 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 that is off. Okay. So I used to do this kind of work on a, a, like a competition page on Facebook. It's called uh, Sketch Wars. It's not as big right now, but there was a lot of people doing it for a long period of time. And this was a quick sketch that we was kind of a call to action. So I did this quick fusion model. Very simple, very easy. You kind of saw exactly how I did it, right? And I was trying to decide, well, do I want to do a view like this? Or do I want to do a very dramatic down the middle center view of, of this thing, right? And I chose to do this one. And you can see here that I started out, it's kind of a one point, right? Everything's kind of going back into space. And I used a combination of symmetry in sketchbook and a general sketching, right? So if you are old like me, you probably watched this cartoon. So I did a redesign of this. Uh, piece here. So I like to do redesigns, right? So, but you might not be old like me, so you probably didn't watch this in the 70s. So um, anyway, um, so if you start off here, here's my underlay, right? And then uh, this is sort of a quick, let me just see, get my right one here, right? There it is. I want this one. Nope, not that one, All right? That is my underlay then right there. So that is a quick mock-up of what it might look like from a line work standpoint, all right? And then what I do is I start to work with it. I just want, there is my sketch. That's what I want. I want that one, right? So this right here, you can see that I did a drawing based on this, right? And this is a blue line, quick thumbnail sketch of the similar level that I did the previous sketch, right? It's just a quick blue line to make sure things are kind of where they are and what I want it to be. But from there, I go through the process and I make um, a clean layer off of that, which I probably have up here, right? And it's this one right here. And what I do is I trace it. So first I use the CAD file to give me this one. And then I retraced it to give me a clean, concise view of what the outside would be. Okay, so let me turn that one off in the back. And let me start with my layers at the bottom and turn off the guide layers. So if I come here, and I do a quick color fill. If you've used Photoshop or anything else, you can do quick color fill, but it's basically color by number right now. It's a big blue blob in the middle, right? And then I've got another layer to call out other color details for it, right? So at this moment in time, it's just basically paint by number, right? Very simple. You can see it now how it's paint by number, okay? So just to get to this level is pretty basic from that standpoint, as far as the steps. Sure, the line work is harder. 
sure the perspective is harder, but like the coloring size is pretty basic, right? I'm just blocking in color. And here's another little color section. And there's another color section for the nose there where I change the tone just a little bit. And as I move up, right, I've got little details on there, right? And those, I don't know why those are like that, but we'll find out what I did, right? And then a little more detail, a little more detail, a little more detail where it's starting to get darker darks and lighter light, right? I have a feeling that one's not supposed to be there, but we'll find out, right? Darker darks. Now you can see my light source is on the left side and it's kind of going towards the right side. And as I add in more shadows, I'm just using layer strategy to control it so I can easily, you know, delete it, clean it, erase it, and so on, right? So as it gets darker, right, you can see that it's getting more contour and I'm really sculpting with light. So I'm using darker to help you help your eye see inside. Right. And so if I come right here and you see the difference right between that and that, I'm giving your eye what it normally sees. And your eye just believes it. I'm totally cheating. I'm faking it. I'm getting your eye to believe that that's dished in there, right? And that's, that's kind of half my job, right? That's what we do. And then we add a little bit of color for highlight on the top here. And you can see the difference. As soon as I crisp that and add those elements, your eye starts to believe it more. And then it starts to believe it more because it's seeing more details, right? I probably have one down here that looks like shouldn't be on. Let's turn that off. All right. No, nope. Nope. There's one on there, right? Nope. Not that one. Well, we'll find out which one it is. But I see a little writing there. Okay. All right. And then we go a little farther and a little farther and look at that one right there. Look how much it crisps all the details, right? And it starts to pull it together with the highlight details. And then we add some more shadow and then a little detail for a logo over here, right? And it's just a multiply on there. And then some highlights, some crisp details. And then we've got these glow details on here to get really hot highlights and then probably some more glow details more glow more glow right and it just pops it even more and then i got a little sketch layer on top but right now it looks just kind of bland because there's no background right and that's why i did these layers down here so as soon as we blacken it up we add some elements we add some luminosity there some information in the back a little more glow a little more layer here for some detail. And I think that is just a sketch for the other one. And that's a sketch for the other one because I did both, right? That's a sketch for the other one. And then that is nothing here, right? So you can see how I built those elements to drive through, right? And we built that process up to get it to this level, right? So. Both of these practices are 100% valid as far as how to work and why you should find this middle ground between CAD and drawing, right? So let's go to the other side of the coin, right? And let's go to something like this, right? Where I like to talk about how you're showing things and how things are perceived, right? So if you're working in a professional environment and you're, you're showing a thumbnail sketch, a thumbnail sketch really looks like it's not done yet. It's a maybe it's like, what are we doing? I'm not sure yet. Um, and there's a time for that, right? So when you, show a CAD rendering, everything looks finished, polished, and everyone thinks, you know, uh, it's done, it's finished. 
and you don't, don't get a lot of feedback, right? So knowing what level the drawing to show, whether it's a quick thumbnail, whether it's a illustrator drawing, whether it's a full rendering, whether it's a computer rendering of CAD, knowing how to do that is really important. But if you've got something at a CAD level and you wanna pull it back a little, you can use drawing to pull back on that information. So if you look at this here, right? If I get rid of my drawing layers, okay? And I get rid of my shadow layer, it's just a CAD rendering. That's all this is. And if I show the CAD rendering with the depth of field here, it starts to look like, you know, especially with the CAD shadow, it starts to look like a photo, right? So if I don't want that and I want more variation, all I've got to do is give it some sketch quality. Like I'm going to give it, you know, a sketched shadow. I'm going to give it like a little kind of pulling out of it. I'm going to add some little sketchy lines in there. I'm going to add some sketch outline and then I'm going to add just a little more detail for bold outline. And now it looks much more like a sketch, less like a CAD file. So you can use those elements to help you sell what you want done. And if you can control people's perception in a meeting, you can gain feedback or stop feedback. So there's, there's a benefit to both sides of the, that coin, right? Okay, let's open another one here, right? And let's go to this one here. Right. And this is just this is, again, me practicing infusion. Right. But I show you this one because um, it's what I did here. So I'm using drawing and rendering to modify the CAD file. And you can see it when we get in close here. There's a little sketchy quality here. But if I get rid of my information, that drawing in that white highlight and that highlight and that shadow and this colored in area, that's the CAD file. Now, if I went in and changed the CAD file, it would probably take more time than blocking in a little red color, splashing in a little highlight, splash in a highlight, splash in another highlight, do a quick little drawing to tidy it up, right? That's eight minutes worth of work, if that, to do that. So don't be afraid to modify a rendering as well. And I don't care if you're using Photoshop, I don't care if you're using sketchbook, whatever, layer strategy and highlight and shadow is what it's all about, right? So being able to do that um, is part of the coin, right? So it's a great way to work, okay? So let's go. Um, let's open the Camaro speeder because I have that one there, right? And so you can see the actual file, right? So this is literally um, me trying to figure this out so I could build the CAD file. And if you notice, right, I've got a whole set of lines here where I just used the ruler command. And if I take that out, you can see it very clearly that I'm just lining things up that's just basic drafting 101 to try and line things together and if you notice like the windshield here is all bleeding out and as soon as i put this gray color in here it cleans everything so i'm using the one layer to contain the other layer um, because i want to save time right it's all about time and then you can easily grab these images and drop them into the cad file like you saw right mm -hmm. Okay, let's go from there and let's talk about, do I have, uh, let's talk about this one because this is a nice demo in regards to something that's in process. So I did a demo uh, maybe a year ago, right? And this is literally the process, right? So this is a CAD file, 
out of fusion and a tank is a really hard thing to draw. Like when you shift elements, right? So the turret versus the body, to be able to move that and adjust it is a hard technical drawing. So if I can build a CAD file like this and I can put it together and then I can start to detail this, right? And start to draw things out. And here's a thumbnail sketch for that side, but you know, you can see that's all in proportion there and it all lines up. This was my demo process, you know, of working through it, but you can see that it, it, the smallest little detail here, just drawing this out, I'm gonna think about it. I have a really good underlay and I can start to think about what it's gonna look like, all right? That's a really interesting way to work, all right? Any questions? I guess I have a question. Um, Go ahead. How long would you say that you spend on the CAD file, not to get like so nitty gritty into the details? Um, yeah, just time length, I guess. For something like uh, the, for the, uh, the spaceship at the start. So the spaceship at the start, that's probably like maybe 10 minutes, maybe. Because I was trying to figure it out. Um, this tank turret here, I could probably build that in like eight, five, mm -hmm. eight minutes. Cause it's not, it's not crazy. Right. It's, it's nothing. All right. It's so easy when you really come down to it, to build a file of that nature. Um, uh, don't be afraid to steer me, James. Would you rather see more sketching how and why, or do you want to see how to build that? Um, I think the um, how to build it would be really helpful. Um, sure. It's just one thing you I would be interested in is uh, where this all lies in the design process. Um, love hearing about that in terms of whether if it's initial ideation or looking towards more of a finalized project at the end. It, 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 the answer is yes, because it doesn't matter. The traditional theory is you always start with a drawing and you work your way, but that's not always the case, right? And sometimes the reason why I show you the um, the that drawing of the car where it's a it's a computer rendering that I changed it a little bit. There's a time to use it then, right? There's a time to use it as an idea. It, it can go either way, as I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter. There's no right and wrong wrong answer there, right? So let's do let's do a tank uh, underlay, right? So if I draw a sketch here, right, and I look at that, and we're, we're just going to raw chunk it out, right, because that's all it needs to be, right? Are you using a 3D pen when you're doing all of this? I am right now, yes. I am using the Wacom Pro 3D pen on an Intuos, which is just a tablet, right? Okay. So super easy, we got that. And I'm just doing a sketch here. And then we're gonna do a, we'll go here, All right? Have you used Fusion to envision any of the uh, bike ramps you were building out in the woods? Uh, slightly, I have. I have done that in the past, yeah. Okay, so it's real quick, real basic from that standpoint. Um, let me just do a quick little sketch here as well. All right, just so we have something else to look at. 
because again, I'm just treating this as a um, concept. It doesn't matter ultimately what it looks like. I'm just trying to get it to be something, right? All right, so there we go. And we're gonna stop that sketch. So I'm gonna say extrude uh, this and this, All right? I'll send that out, All right? We can join that, that's fine. Let's just make it a new body though. All right, there we go, say okay. And then I'll say extrude this and this, and we're gonna say symmetric here, All right? Cause I wanna build like, you know, this element that's on the inside and we're going to switch that to join. And now I have a general intent, you know, for that. Okay. Lovely, terrific. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the move command, which is super powerful. And I'll use faces, right? And I want to move that face and I want to articulate that face this way. And I am going to push it out now. All right. And I'll say, okay. And I'll say, right click, repeat, move, copy. And I want to move that face. And I'm going to do the same thing this way. All right. It gives me a little more interest to what it's going to look like. And then I'm going to add a fillet here and here, right? Just so I have something different to look at, right? So it's articulating that element. Okay. Works for me. We'll say mirror. We'll say bodies body to mirror, I want to move this body and this body. My mirror plane is here. Great, go ahead and join them. That's fine, it didn't join that one on here. So I'm just gonna say, edit that feature for a second. I'm gonna say, new body, okay. And then I'll say, combine this one and that one because it couldn't join the treads, right? So now I have this pretty good proportion of what this thing is gonna look like for right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw a little bit of a turret. I'll sketch on here. I can go through here to my XZ plane, right? And I'll just give myself, you know, a rough little intent, right? I want to do a line right, of what this thing might look like. There we go. Beautiful. You say, okay. I'm going to say extrude this out. All right. And I'm going to say that's great. And now I'm going to move that all right, face. I'll angle that face back. Terrific. Works for me right now. I'm going to say mirror, body to mirror, mirror plane, this, join them. Okay. And like in not a lot of time, I'm partially there. Right. So I'm going to hide my lower body of the tank for a second, because I want to make this um, pivotable. So I'll do a sketch on here. I will look at that and I'm going to draw a circle. Let's just say that we pick uh, off the origin here, right? And I'm going to draw a circle off of that, right? Just so we have something to deal with. And I'll say extrude this circle here. Great, join it, terrific. I will turn my top back on and I'll say combine and I'll say target body is this, tool body is this, keep my tools, cut that. Uh, I'm gonna grab it backwards, yep, nope. Target body is this, keep my tools, okay, great. And so now um, I've got these quickly set up. All right, let's do a quick sketch on this plane here. Nope, grab the wrong one. Let's just redefine that sketch plane. I want my XZ, there it is. We say, okay, we'll look at that. Hold on, I hit the wrong button. I want to edit this sketch, there we go. Okay, and I want to just draw a line roughly to get myself some sort of turret information. Great, finish that sketch. I'll use the pipe command and I'll just pipe that a smaller diameter and I'll say, go ahead and join that, terrific. 
So I have a general intent uh, for what these look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this body here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create component from body. So it's going to make it a component. So we'll say tank body. And then this one here is my turret. So I'll right click and I'll say create component from body. And we'll just label this one turret. All right. And now I'll ground my tank body. So it's locked in place. And I'll say as built joint, this, that, right? My motion will be revolute and my rotation point will be, that sketch is fine. And now I can articulate it, move it, terrific. So now I can say, well, this thing's driving along and it's gonna turn over here like this, which is a really hard thing to do, to do in a drawing, in a technical drawing to have those multiple perspectives, right? Let me turn my sketches off. I'll switch it over to render and we'll switch the scene and let's put it in the crossroads, right? There we go. Just so we can have an outside scene, right? Let's see if we can do better than that. Let's do the field, right? Just so we have some reference and good. And we'll make the scale much smaller because this thing is way too small there we go right i'm going to turn off my reflections and maybe we'll rotate it around a little bit and we'll move it over here and maybe we'll just maybe just drop it down a little right so in not a lot of time i have this in an environment i have it in a position where i could say render this i didn't save it yet all right let me just put it in my test files. No, we'll put it in there, right? All right, we'll do an in-canvas render, to see what it looks like. You can see that it's got reflections right now. I, don't, I could make it whatever, but it's also got shadows, it's got elements, and you're basically at the point where you've got an underlay, you can drop it in Sketchbook or Photoshop. It's not hard. Like once you have basic fusion skills, that's it. You can just play with it and ideate and then draw on it and ideate more, right? Because let's just say, right, let me, let me turn this view a little bit more, right? And let's say I wanted the turret to be going the other way, right? I could just grab it and move it. Right? Like I don't have to do anything else. And let's say I zoom in a little bit, right? And let's just say this is a little bit reflection-y for me right now. And I wanna make it more of a matte color, right? We can just grab powder coat, right? And we'll just grab like a dark gray, right? Just to make it, you know, less crazy glow off this thing, right? Okay. So now I've got this image, it's starting to come together. I'll just let it render for a second here. And then I'll just go ahead and say, give me a screen capture for right now. All right, good enough for me. I am gonna say, stop share, share, screen three, share. Let me move this real quick, All right? And now, gotta grab the right thing. Okay. All right, I don't care right now what it looks like because it's just a quick little thing, right? And so I've got this intent that took me no time to deal with, right? I mean, you guys asked me to do this on the fly and here we are, we're already, we're already drawing. Right, and we built our CAD file. So let's just say that, you know, let's just do it as a blue line at first, right? And so I've got this, you know, little element that I left just kind of sitting there, not knowing what it's gonna look like, but um, I'm drawing the wrong one. I'm gonna draw this one. 
right? I can start to think about this, right? And say, well, you know, I really wanted this to have this little step down here, right? And maybe this one is gonna be faceted instead, and it's gonna have like a little element on the side here, right? This one's still here, this one's coming down, this one's coming down, now it's faceted, right? Okay, and I've got this element coming across here, right? This now similar to that side, right? And this one's coming down, that's gonna be in here a little bit, right? That's sitting in here. And then my center point is roughly here, right? And then I'm gonna bring that from there and maybe there's a little like sort of bumper over here and maybe, you know, there's a little undercarriage light that sits here, right? And then I've got like, you know, a winch or something that's attached in here that it's got like a little cable attached on, right? And then this just kind of angles up, right? And it comes back together here, but then it, it comes back down and this goes here, right? And you can see that I'm using the drawing, which are the CAD file to give me intent, right? It's just a block chunk. And now I'm adding those details or those elements, right? Like now I know there's gonna be a wheel here and a wheel here, and there's gonna be a wheel here and a wheel here. And then there'll be a whole chunk of them here and a whole chunk of them here. And you just work with it as you go, right? And then let's say this is gonna be bigger here, right? And then there's a sort of a opening on the top here. And maybe there's like an element that's got more venting, right? On here, right? This has got a little pivot element in it. You can see where I'm going, guys. Does that make sense, right? You can use it as a starting point and never be afraid to trace your work. This blue line layer here, there's usually a reason why you do it blue because then I can tone it down. I can put a new layer over it and I can do it in black now and I can really detail it and I can trace my own work again and I want to put a little detail in here, right? And this is going to have a little element here, a little detail, right? And then this is going to come down and it's going to come down here and this will maybe flare out, right? And maybe this is actually like a marker or something and there's like an element in there so it's actually stepped in, right? Right? And you do that work on a secondary layer and you build on your prior work, right? Does that help, James? It's really great to see in real time. Thanks for that. No, no problem. Like, you know, you can, I mean, I'm working a little fast, you know, just to make sure I get it done before seven, but, you know, but you can, that's the point is how you do that and how you build on what you did, whether you're tracing over your own drawing whether you're tracing over a CAD file, right? It doesn't matter, right? And then you know where your light source is, you know where your shadows are gonna be, you know that the turret is gonna have a little bit of shadow there and how that works and all those elements start to come together. Anybody else have any questions? You're supposed to ask me, me and James how much fusion is. So we can say it's free and we can say sketchbook is free too, right? It's your education. So everything's free. <laughs> so you go download anything, right? It's not free if you're, um, a, if you're a defense industry professional, I'll tell you that. <laughs> correct. Yes. But if you're a student, it's free. <laughs> correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And you have unlimited cloud rendering and unlimited cloud testing and all this other stuff. So Use it while you got it, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking a uh, additive manufacturing course through MIT. Sure. And oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know those guys, Rory yeah. and uh, yeah, Munch yeah. is her name, the yep. coordinator. Yep. So I'm I'm taking that in May, and then um, as part of my uh, stuff for my company, to as some additional education, and it they use cloud-based fusion, but yep, one of the 
compounding things at the end is you do a case study or you create, you know, a, an actual object of itself as part of the course. Correct. So I, I just didn't know if there was like any good tips for once I get into learning it and using that on with Fusion on my uh, Cintiq itself. Um, on the Cintiq or just in general? Just in general, like overall, because I'm, I'm using Fusion on the Cintiq with the 3D sure. pen. Yeah. Yeah, I, from that standpoint, I, I use it on Cintiq. I use it with um, Intuos, like I built today on the Intuos. So it's just the tablet, not drawing on the screen, but I use it both ways and the pen. I love the pen. I, you know, that's the way I do everything right now. I just, it's easy to transfer. Um, but for that class, if it's a class, um, you'll be doing generative design as well. Right. So, and... I, I you know it's a quite interesting class. I've helped them, and I've got to sit in on that class a couple of times. Yeah, so I'm I'm probably coming at my use for fusion and learning it from maybe a different perspective than you know the students at RIT, whereas I'm in the you know defense community and learning sure. how to design things and whatnot. So that's kind of my goal is to build on sure. kind of what I do. So oh, hundred percent, hundred percent, and I and I we're a little more focused today on um like fusion and drawing combined right, right. but there's oh, right. all kinds of stuff you can do on that on oh, oh yeah well I, oh, yeah. I need to update my art skills my brother's the artistic one i'm the science one so. that's okay that's okay i i i, I kind of sit in the middle but i've i've watched your videos the ones the, at least the ones that were on the wacom website and you know i was very interested oh. and that's what kind of drove me to get the cintiq and use fusion and sure decide to make this kind of leap for my uh, career because I'm at kind of like the mid senior level to build on my skills. So. Sure. I, I love the pen. That's why I mean, I, when, to me, when we did that video, uh, they basically asked me to write the script and like talk about what you do. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> what I do. You know, well, it's funny. I don't, I don't have a screen that big though. I have, I have the smaller 13 and 16, right? So I, that was the only time I got to use the screen that big. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's like, you know, no free hardware have, for you. Yeah. No, free, I, well, I have free hardware, but not that hardware. Ah, oh, gotcha. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I have plenty of free Wacom hardware here, but <laughs> I don't, I don't have that hardware because I, I tend to use the mobile ones more. So I have right. the 13 inch mobile computer one and I have the 16 inch mobile computer one. And I have their Wacom one, which is what I was just drawing on there, which is their cheapest bottom barrel Cintiq, yeah. which is great for drawing. I love the thing. Modeling and fusion, not as much, but right. for drawing, it's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Do you, do you have any good, like, um, I guess, uh, resources for like really learning fusion. Well, I found some stuff on YouTube, but I just don't know if sure. there's like anything that you have a suggestion or if you have like specific, like within sketchbook, like the specific, uh, sure. you know, uh, drawing packs that you use or anything. So for fusion, the first thing is go to the help menu here and one show the learning panel. And this is interactive based on what you're doing. And you've got learning that you can start things, but it's also guidance based on what you do and how you work. So that's a very interesting way to learn and try things. And you could do one of the, you know, information that it gives you here and follow the steps, right? So it's interesting, right? That's one way, okay? Another way is the learning and documentation self-paced learning, right? So if I come here, right, it's going to pop up this, right? And you've got all these lesson plans. So getting started for beginners, administration, SOLIDWORKS transition, master cam transition, uh, mechanical assemblies, mechanical assemblies fundamentals, generative design, right? Um, product design development, like ways to build these different things, electronic design. There's all these tests and you just launch the, there's nine lessons in here, right? You can start it. It's a really nice 
concise package, right? Additive manufacturing with net bag, tool pass programs and CAM, you know, lots of stuff, right? That's another good resource. I would do that. You already mentioned the Fusion 360 YouTube page. Yeah, that's nice as well, but this is a really good one as well. Right. And it's right linked out of Fusion. So if you haven't used those. I've been looking at it and I was just curious also like how, what what is the like timeline that it should take someone to get like even like the beginner certification that they offer? Because they have like uh, the three di different levels, like the beginner, the intermediate, and then the expert. For you fusion. mean how long should you be using it before you go try and take it? Right. Or like what's the average time that someone builds enough skills? I don't to... know. Okay. That, that, that the certification side is not where I am. <laughs> right. Right. It was just a general question. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know. Okay. And then as far as sketchbook, like you, it looks like you're using very sp specific br brushes in your palette. Do you um, have, yeah, I, um, um, hold on one second. Let me switch that side. Right. So yes, I was, but that's because I was too lazy um, to change something right now. Uh, so I've got this, um, this is Hudson Rio's setup, right? Um, but the basic one is, is, let's see here. I was too lazy to pin the palette, right? Okay. The basic one, this is all you need. Pencil tool, brush tool, airbrush tool, array, hard erase, and that erase. That's, that's all you need really, right? Perfectly fine. The, you know, there's all kinds of other things. Like if you, you know, you can dive in and add any of these and you can download them. Like, so Hudson's here, uh, he's a designer as well. I liked, I liked his, so I downloaded them. And I believe that is... That's up in the extras. Uh, yeah, but hold on. I want to just double check. Sketchbook blog. Right. So if I grab the blog, right, you can download. Up, 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 come on. There we go. So you can search here for all kinds of different brushes. It's just, and you just download them. Right. So it's, it's a nice way to work for doing that. Right. So let's just say Hudson. Right. All right. Okay. So free brush set. Great. I think they might just, nope, that's right here. So. That's the brush set, and then you just download it, right? Right, just, right. Just download. Yeah, it's also found That's under really... the under the Windows sketchbook yep. extras. Yeah. Yep. You get tons of brushes. I just didn't know if there was yeah. like so, something specific that you know you built yourself that you feel is like nope. superior in nope. some way. The I, I use the basic tools, and I use like Hudson's uh, these three brushes right here. This one this one and this one everything else is i could take it or leave it but i just ha instead of dragging them over there i just switched it i just turned it on right because it was faster right, right? So that's, i just did that you know but because i like a couple of the tools then i could take or leave some of them but they're almost the same oh well, awesome all right yeah Enjoy that class at MIT as well. I uh, I work with some of those guys. I'm yeah. very much and, looking and forward enjoy, to it. Enjoy generative with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, James, I'm going to give you fusion. <laughs> I'm going to hand it back to you, and I'm going to go have dinner. Thanks so much, Jeff, for doing this. This was absolutely fantastic. No problem. I already got a few no messages problem. from people saying that uh, there are a few people gathered around a screen, so uh, they got a lot out of cool. it to apply. So cool. Uh, All right. Thanks so much again. No worries, man. Have a good Talk one. to you later. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Cool. So the second half is just for people who have never touched Fusion before, who would like to give for their, a shot for the first time. Um, if you have used Fusion before, this may not be too much of a help, but it's sort of doing what Jeff did in slower motion. So um, Liam, I know that you've done Fusion before um, and really anyone else. So if you want to dip now, that's completely fine. No hurt feelings. Um, we'll at least take a five minute break. So we'll see who's still around or if anyone joins after that. So 
Uh, we can totally start up at 7.15 for anyone who's interested. So cool. see you then. Thank you.
All right, great. We can go ahead and get started. Um, I'm using a uh, different Zoom account for this. I have my camera over here, so I'm going to be looking over here. Um, you can go ahead and pin my video. That is the one screen sharing if it's not automatically showing up, um, if my audio makes it switch back and forth. But here we are. Um, we are in Fusion. And um, Jeff was able to give a great overview. Uh, what we're going to do here is take a moment to slow that down, um, what he was really doing in those last 15 minutes, and share you a little bit more about how to properly set up a document, how to make a few of those basic objects, and get into rendering really quick. Um, some people might be surprised or can't think that you can learn Fusion in an hour or 45 minutes, but it's actually really easy to pick up, I would say, um, and it really sets the foundation for whatever, whatever you'll be doing next. Um, so here we go. Um, so first thing I'd like to do when I uh, load up Fusion is just kind of share what you're looking at. Um, it's very user friendly in the sense that you have your most important and uh, most often, most frequently used items at the top. This is mainly what we'll be touching it today. But for when you get into more objects later on, you can see how powerful Fusion is as a uh, software. As you can see that we have different menus for service modeling, sheet meddling, um, fabrication, and even tools, uh, generative design, rendering, animation, simulations, the list keeps going. Um, once you begin to dig beneath the surface, there's a lot more there that you can begin to learn and apply into what you're gonna work on. But for today's purposes, we're gonna help you figure out how to set up some of those underlays for sketching. Um, so at the top over here, we have um, our basic tools, uh, both utilizing sketching tools and uh, how to combine, take things apart, uh, modeling tools. Uh, you can see when we drop down the menu, we have even more, we'll delve into this a little bit. Um, then over on the side here, we have our uh, tree that has all our parts and assemblies uh, connected together. Fusion is both a top-down and bottom-up assembly uh, constructor tool. And so what that means is you can either build everything in one document, or you can pull things from other documents and drag and drop them into your document and combine them from there. That becomes really useful when, say, for example, you need a screw. And instead of taking the time to model the screw, both the head, um, spiral, or the screw part itself, uh, you can actually drag and drop it in from websites like McMaster Car, where they make their 3D files available to you. And you can simply drop them in and it saves time and also is accurate to what part you can then order from McMaster Car as well. Um, so there's advantages of both uh, building um, your item both in the software and also just having a bunch of different components from external sources. And that will all appear in your browser over here. Um, so there's three terms that quickly pick up, um, and that is assemblies, components, and bodies. And the easiest way to remember what all those mean is I like to think of it as a Lego set. Um, so Lego set has a bunch of parts, you dump them all together, and you build something out of them. That there is considered an assembly, is where everything that you build, it's an assembly of all your parts. And then those parts, those individual bricks, are the components within your assembly. Um, so you can move them around in space, you can have them uh, hit their sides to next to each other, stack them on top of each other. Um, they're these solid bodies that interact with each other. Now for that last one, for the bodies, which is the bottom tier, bodies are what those bricks are made out of. So maybe you might have a standard two by four brick, but let's say you wanted to add some like studs on the side or something, you're able to add more bodies onto that main body. And so that collection of bodies becomes a component. So that's the way that fusion is broken up and uh, hopefully that'll become a little more clear once we jump into it. Um, the last thing, or not last thing, on the bottom here, we have our timeline. So as we begin to add various um, features onto what we're working on, uh, you saw Jeff was playing a little bit earlier with, um, going back in time and checking out what he previously did, how he set up his models. This allows us to go back in time and see if we want to make edits later on or just see how we were able to create a document. So that's what we have going on down here. Um, I'm using a mouse, and uh, but you can also use Fusion on a trackpad. And so for zooming, you can mouse wheel scroll in. 
I'm pretty sure trackpad is either two fingers in or sort of pinch to zoom. I forget which one off the top of my head, but you also have this top cube in the uh, top right corner, which is really helpful for when you just simply need to access the top side, you can hit the arrows to turn around, view things at different angles. Um, even as a top right uh, or corner, which does come in hand, again, for sketching where if you need that just corner shot, really easy. Of course, you can angle it yourself, but it gets you in that position where you would prefer to be. Um, so there you go. That is the uh, brief overview of how everything is, everything looks like. And let's go ahead and begin working on learning some of what we have available here. I'm just going to delete in our timeline. Delete. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to save our document. Um, I am going to call this FOF, Fusion on the Fives. Uh, I'm just going to put today's date, but feel free to call it whatever you want for 1521. And when you drop down the menu, you can see that I have a variety of projects. And then within those projects are um, different files. And so, for example, I can make a file in Fusion and drag it into another one of these files. Uh, so um, I'm going to put it in Ambassador Help, Fusion Ambassador, and hit Save. Great. And uh, also, if I men should mention, um, if you're either following along or just listening, feel free to stop me at any time, um, whether to ask questions, if I gloss over something that wasn't clear. If someone has a, has a question, then odds are you, or if you have a question, odds are someone else does, or even if I'm just speaking too fast, please let me know. Um, feel free to write me a direct message in the chat or unmute your mic. So let's go ahead and begin working on our item, whatever it is. Uh, and I'm going to, the first thing we wanna do is create a new component. And what that'll do is save us some headache later down the line. This is sort of Fusion's rule number one when setting up a uh, file um, is creating a new component. So you're working in this uh, component, uh, we'll just call this, what do you wanna make? Uh, Let's make a, uh, a plane. So I'm just going to call this here plane. Cool. So we have a file, and this will be our first component within this assembly. So you can see that this used to be a cube, but is now changed into this uh, three boxed item. And that, what that means is that's the symbol for assembly. So as I mentioned before, assembly tier, component tier, and then when we drop down this, when we create something in there, there'll be bodies that will show up there. We can go ahead and do that now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start off with the sketch. And you can find that either by hitting S or create sketch underneath solid above create. And we, this opens up our origins. So we have three origins to choose from and uh, trying to figure out what I'd like to do first. I think what I'll do is create the uh, the cabin area, the long tube of the plane. This is going to be a very abstract plane, of course, but as you saw, it doesn't really matter um, since we'll be sketching over it later on. So I am going to be able to click and drag and hit escape to get out any commands. You'll notice that when we enter the sketch uh, sketching area, we move from our solid menu and this new menu popped up that's in light blue, which is our sketch menu. So this allows us to work within this and you can see that we can drag things around and we have all our tools up here. Another thing that we have are constraints. So if I made another circle, let's say over here, um, and I wanted to make them equal, I can select the two circles, hit equal. And now when I adjust one circle over here, it automatically adjusts other ones. So this becomes really helpful by, instead of dimensioning everything down, you can simply make things equal and that makes everything else automatically update. So you can explore what else we have up here. So we can make two lines, horizontal or vertical. Um, like let's say, yeah, this one's hanging out down here, but I want them to be horizontal. I'm just gonna hit that. You can see that it automatically just snaps. So it is on the same plane. I'm just going to delete the circle since it's for demonstration purposes. But now that we have this circle, you notice that it is blue and moves around. Um, the way that 
Jeff was going about it in terms of just throwing lines down to get your general shakedown is a good way to do it, a great way to approach it. Um, but say just for knowledge, when you uh, begin to create items that are a little more in depth, um, you want to make things that are constrained. And so constrained versus non-constrained is that things can move around and then when they're not constrained and when they're constrained, they're stuck in place, they're not going to move around. And that's what we generally want. So say I'm going to make this circle three inches. You can see that our circle has now turned black. And that means it's not going to move. It's not going to go anywhere. It's uh, attached to the origin. It's stuck there. It's not going to move. It's exactly where it needs to be. Um, so I'm going to hit finish sketch, this big green check mark. And that brings us back to the solid modeling menu. And so I'm now moving around. You can also drag the cube around if I hadn't mentioned that. And what I want to do next is show you the extrude command. So I'm going to hit extrude. Uh, with a lot of these commands, what's really helpful about Fusion is that it brings up dialog boxes that Follow, walks you through the process of exactly the inputs that it's asking from you. Um, so as we go down this, we'll first see that it's looking for profiles. We want a circle to be the profile. And we can now either drag it either direction and choose our size, but we don't really want to do that right now. Let's see, undo that, oops. Drag it, all right. So here's our cabin of the plane. Um, we don't want to uh, make it symmetrical. We could though, um, and we'll just hit, okay. Great. Um, so the next thing I want to do is create the wings of the plane. And so I am going to select this plane. Oh, oops, so sorry about that, here. And I am going to roughly draw in one side of the wing. Um, why wouldn't I do two? Well, it's quite simply put, uh, when we do end up mirroring it, just like I had mentioned previously before, it's easier to just draw one side and update it on one side so it automatically updates the other side. So I'm just going to draw a uh, uh, this shape. And I'm not going to constrain it just so that we um, looking good on time and just kind of aim to how I want it to look. I'll take that. Cool. Now you'll see that I uh, the back doesn't go back all the way. So I'm actually going to use my timeline feature. Uh, go back to the extrude that I did on the bottom. And by right clicking on it, a menu pops up. I can delete it. What we want is edit feature. And I am going to change this from one side to two sides. So that allows me to also change the back side um, so that I'll be able to cover that distance in the back. What I want to do from here is I'm going to add some thickness onto the plane. Um, again, using what we just had selected, I'm going to do symmetrical so it's on both sides. Um, I'm going to eyeball this to see how much plane thickness I want. Eh, half inch is a little much, so I'm actually going to type in a number itself. Um, when Fusion asks for measurements, you can either type in a direct measurement, or we can also type in a math equation. So in this case, quarter of an inch going both ways, it's going to make it a half inch. Uh, looks a little thick for maybe what I'm going after. So I'm going to actually make it an eighth of an inch. Oops. Edit feature, so I can also go back. And the bottom thing it's asking us is, do we want what do we want to do with it? And so what I had there, it automatically selected to cut. You can see that it did that. What I want to do instead is join. So now we have our plane wing. Hit OK. Great. So again, uh, I am going to mirror this wing. My bad. Going back just a little, edit feature again. I'm going to create this a new body so that this is separate from the main body. So I'm going to be able to mirror it over. So I'm going to create, mirror, and we can go from here of selecting faces, bodies, we want bodies since we created a, another one here. Select our objects and select our mirror plane. So instead of selecting a uh, 
we are going to be able to use this plane here in the middle, and that's going to flip it onto the other side, gives us a little preview. Is that exactly what we want? Operation, join them. Cool. So now we have our plane. So it's looking a little not quite as aerodynamic as I would prefer it to be. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fillet onto this edge and this edge here. And I'm able to drag it down as far as I want. I'm actually going to go pretty far just for the fun of it. Give it a, a sharper angle at the front. And we'll hit OK. Cool. Oops. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the canopy section for this area. Um, instead of fully fleshing out what I want, I'm going to use the fill command again and round it off an uh, inch and a half. And so what we can do here is that we get this reference, we kind of get where we want to slope down. And by sketching over it, we'd be able to get that more plane shape where it's got the nose that comes down a little more to right here, and then it pulls back uh, at the bottom. So again, here we're just using the interpretation of what we want. Last thing I'm going to do is the tail fin. So create another sketch. And I'm not going to anchor it to any of the bodies, but instead I'm going to use our uh, last plane that we haven't used. And going to just create our tail fin. And what I'll do is, oops, since I want to get this anchor point here, so I know where the top of this uh, plane is, is I'm going to project, project this point. So to do that, I'm going to hit the letter P. And this opens up our project menu. And so we can select the, this line here. And that means we have selected the circle that will translate into a line onto our new plane, the front plane to properly orient myself. Hit OK. And now I'm able to snap to this point, go up. Oh man, this is gonna be one wild plane. And when we hover over this point, we're able to snap it. You see that blue dotted line uh, coming on down and make our triangle. Now you see that since I didn't mention this, a closed object is when the inside is shaded blue. Um, so if it isn't, if you're doing a more complex object and it isn't turning blue, that means two of your line segments aren't matching up quite where they should be. Uh, so this is a good way to solve that problem. And we'll hit finish sketch. And again, we'll do exactly what we did last time, uh, extruding. And I'm going to do 1 16th of an inch, but I'm going to do it symmetrical. So it is extruding on both sides, straight down the middle, hit OK. All right. I don't think I'll be designing planes anytime soon, but that's not the point of this. The, uh, again, the interpretation or the idea that you're trying to get down as your underlay so you can work on this. Um, great. So to demonstrate the more components that you can have, I'm actually going to select our main body and I'm going to create a new component in here, which is going to be called, um, cube, because I'm going to make a cube. And uh, this is to relate back to what you have, might have learned in design drawing of uh, how to properly illustrate and communicate an idea. Um, so I'm going to turn off plane. It's in the same file, but just working with it. I'm going to create a sketch. Actually, I'm going to take a second. Sorry if anyone needed to catch up there. If anything wasn't clear, um, feel free to let me know now before we move on to the next area. All good. Cool. 
move on to the next part. And that's just making a cube. And let's see, I'm going to create a sketch. Let's see my ground plane. No. So also I'll mention that you want to make sure which uh, component you're working on. And the way to tell is that um, I'm just going to make a quick cube just to better illustrate this. So when we select everything, we have all our layers on. You can see that everything is shaded in. But if we want to select a certain plane or, or other object, that is the one that we're working on. And the timeline will respond appropriately. Um, I don't want the plane. I just want the cube. And so I'm going to select that as the layer I'm going to work on. So hit delete, and I'll create a sketch. Nothing too crazy, just a cube. Uh, so it looks like we're 15. And to, I can either click uh, and dimension this off later, but I'm going to just add 15, 15. And to mention how to dimension off, the dimension tool is up here, so you can click on it. Delete this, just a demo. Click the dimension tool, click an edge, 15 inches, perfect. That's what we want. Um, the other thing I'll mention just while I'm in the sketch plane is a construction line, which is not a solid line that we have up here, but rather is a dotted line that allows you to work within a space and that um, doesn't register when you extrude. As you can see that we're hovering over it, but it doesn't select this triangle area, it still selects the whole area. And the reason I did that is so that I can select that dotted line and the center and the axis, and I can do a midpoint and I can ground it. It's not gonna move anymore. You can see that the lines have turned black, the geometry just text, your geometry checks out that it's not going to move. So I'll hit finish sketch and extrude this up 15 inches. Q, there we go. Um, and what I want, the reason I'm showing this is I want to create a cube that has all rounded edges. So what is that? 12 edges. So I'm going to go around selecting each one. And I'm going to drag it in a little. Now you can see that what it does for us it, it is that it puts down the lines that um, are going to help us visualize this. So for example, uh, let me quickly jump. Dust real design sketch cube. All right, cool. Let me just switch my uh, zoom windows. So for something like this, for example, you can see that instead of sketching out and uh, visualizing how each corner is going to look, um, Fusion Egg is able to give you those uh, um, underlays for where some of these lines might end up. And if you're using it as an underlay, that means you don't have to properly make sure that your ellipses are not weird or wonky. It gives you that little bit more of confidence that you might be looking for. Um, I bring up the rounded cube because even I do this, I bring like my rounded corners all the way to the outside edge instead of where they need to properly be. Um, and sometimes I, uh, some shapes are very complicated and hard to visualize or wrap your mind around, especially when you're beginning to sketch. So if it's easier for you to think three-dimensionally, like build up a modeling tool or use Fusion, um, this is one of those benefits that save time, save headache, have things look right, get your perspective right. Um, those are some of the benefits that come with something like this. Um, share screen, share. So that's why I brought this cube over. Um, just so that you can see that. So of course your line weight, going back into design drawing again, um, your line weight one, your lightest line weight, where you don't want to show details, but rather just describe what an object looks like. This is where one of those benefits would come into play. Um, and then, of course, you could just add your darker outlines uh, where need be. Now, in the uh, 
last moments of time that we have, I am going to go into the render tab. Were there any questions there again? Cool. Um, I'm going to show the render tab so that you can get an idea of what's going on over there and how you might be able to play use that to your benefit. Turn off cube and I'm going to work with the plane that the plane that we've made and make this active. And we are going to go to render, which is in this menu here. And the first thing I'm going to do is add an appearance onto it. So our appearance menu opens up. And let's see, what do I want for this? I'm going to add some paint onto it. Um, maybe some metallic paint, some red for the wing, maybe some blue for the body and just a color here. Now you can see that we don't have all our colors here. And so make whatever color plane you want by uh, double clicking on the color sphere and you can choose the color that you are after. And I will just go for that, this dark blue plane. Yeah. Aesthetic preference of maybe something a little more striking for the tail. Cool. And I'll hit close. Let's see. And the next thing I'm going to do is set up our background. So scene settings. Um, we're going to first check out our environment library. And as you might expect, I want something with a sky. So I'm going to download this environment. Looks like we have a snow field over here. Um, don't know where everyone is zooming in from, but uh, get something a little Rochester appropriate. The computer's taking a hit in one sec. Drag it in. No. Oh, I do I see what's happening? I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Reset, uh, restore defaults. Let me confuse about what's going I can see the reflections of my uh, background. I wish I had an answer for this. I don't know what's happening right now. Um, but I'm taking it in stride. Uh, one thing that you can do is um, even if Fusion doesn't have all the backgrounds that you want, um, just so much as Let's see, Liam, change background from solid color to environment. Got him. Liam, thank you. Again, it really just takes me to go through, take a second and ask what Fusion's asking for me. Thank you. All right, look at it go. Look at it fly. Liam, you saved the day. All right, how about that? Um, so what we can do now is that we can set it as perspective so you can see that our vanishing points are going into the directions that we want them to. Uh, and one thing that uh, you can also do is what Jeff had mentioned, where you can grab the outline in the background and give it a little more dimensionality depth. So rather than just having the sky, maybe that's a little boring, um, have a uh, nice silhouette of a background of white, what might be an interpretation to so there's a mountain range in the background that this thing is flying in the sky. Maybe trace some of these contrails. Um, and uh, what's this one? I'm just gonna make this a little less reflective since it's like totally taken out of the ground. There we go. And you can see that when we do go at a higher angle, um, let's say this is landed and you're having a little tough time trying to register what the shadows look like or how to um, visualize shadows on a uh, ground. I'm gonna go back to my scene setup. 
environment, solid color. Um, you can see that my shadows, my light source is coming from my top left and I can simply mirror those shadows. shadows. I know there's the technique of, um, if you were to do this all by hand, drawing down, drawing off to the side, seeing where your light source is coming on and individually, uh, respectfully, respectively, uh, mirroring each one of these points. Um, and so the easy way to avoid that is, or not avoid it, but a way to get around it, is you can always change your uh, also rotation and just copy down what you have here uh, instead of doing all the uh, design tips that may take you a little bit longer, especially if you're in a, a time crunch. Um, you have 20 sketches due tomorrow. All right, well, you didn't do them. Let's try to get you done, get them done a little quicker. Um, and expanding on sort of what Jeff was doing earlier, you saw that he was working on that one tank near the end of the lecture. Um, what's really cool is you can simply take that underlay, turn it a little, and you can instantly start drawing over it again for another concept. And next thing you know, what that underlay may have just looked like one tank, but when you start laying different layers on it of different variations, you're very quickly, very easily, and very quickly able to um, add a whole nother uh, thought process and more ideas onto a page. Um, I even do this uh, without even using um, uh, a sketchbook or any drawing apps. What I actually do is I print it out uh, and then get some tracing paper and draw over it from there. So if you're not a fan of drawing on the computer, you can also um, use what we've learned today in that sense where you can actually get down, use some markers, and of course, reuse the overlay or using tracing paper. So draw as much as you want to get to the point where you're happy and Laura's happy or whoever your teacher's happy. Um, there we go. Is there anything I can help with or anything that wasn't clear? Anything you'd like to know a little bit more out? more about um, in this intro to fusion. Cool. Liam's good. Um, what did you make? All right. Um, well, yes, this was our uh, quick sort of dive into fusion. Um, if there are no questions, or I, uh, Mr. Bulmer, do you have a question or? Yeah, I was, uh, McLean, uh, it's fine. I'm, uh, so thinking of class with Stan and he suggested joining this. I'm pretty new to Fusion. Uh, he said it started at seven and I was curious, I caught the last bit of what I think was an earlier, maybe more, I'm not sure what he covered, uh, but you mentioned maybe it covered some more advanced topics. Uh, it looks like you're recording this session. Is it possible to get that recording so I can watch that? Of course, sorry, there must have been a miscommunication somewhere along down the line. Um, yeah, no worries. We had Jeff come in and then at seven we had the demo, but we did have to record it. We have a YouTube channel. Um, I'd be happy to take down your email. Um, just drop it in the chat and I can send you a link to the video once it's uploaded. It's probably the easiest. Yes. That'd be great, thank you. Of course. Um, And uh, if there's no more questions, I think we can call it a day here, if there are questions. When you render, like fully go through the render, depending on how complicated, like how, at some where it seems it almost like times out, mm -hmm. and well, my video card is probably not the most powerful, it's still, pretty new computer and I don't know what it's been i7 so it's pretty powerful but like how long do you think it should take or, or should I push it to the cloud and do it in the cloud if it's taking too long what what are some best practices here for sure 
Um, so when we do go into the render menu, um, there's a lot of factors that can play. So not knowing exactly what you're working with, but um, just simply looking at something that is higher resolution, like uh, print eight and a half by 11. Um, you can see that when I select this, it's automatically going up to eight credits. That's at least cloud credits. So if there's more cloud credits, you can imagine you're making your computer do more work. Um, I recommend rendering in the cloud. Um, it's, uh, it's able to do it for you. Um, and if you do have it, are you having a timeout um, just on your local render? Um, yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Um, it really does depend. What I'd recommend is lowering the resolution. Um, okay. Sometimes you'd be surprised that you don't need the top tier um, sure. rendering. I mean, maybe you do, but. No, um, not I what would, I'm doing with Stan right now, no. Okay. Um, I would absolutely recommend cloud rendering and um, yeah, uh, this would also be a time to, for me to plug that. I am a Fusion 360 ambassador, so my job on campus is to help out with any and all Fusion related needs. Um, so if you run into the problem again, and really anyone, if you have any Fusion questions, feel free to reach out and ask, and we can schedule a time to see what's going on. Um, I try to get us back as fast as possible, same day, or if not the day after. So um, if that doesn't work, feel free to reach out. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, Yeah, so I think we can call it there for today. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, and um, if you want to stay uh, up to date on sort of what other fusion related events, we do intros if you want to do that again. Uh, but also we have uh, some guest speakers who do gender design. Um, keep an eye out for it for this semester, but also future semesters as well. So um, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, fusion360 underscore at underscore RIT. Um, we post there frequently to share what's going on. So again, thanks so much for joining. Thank you. Liam? Oh, we're still recording.